You're going to start in that same position with hands on either side of your kettlebell. You're going to jump out, feet back in and together, and instead of just jumping, you're going to pick up the kettlebell and perform a high pull. And you're going to throw leaves all over yourself as you do it, as I have here. What is going on ladies and gentlemen? My name is Sarah and welcome to another video. You are joining me outside on a beautiful fall day as the days are numbered between now and winter time for us in the Northeast. But we are well into our in season now and now is the time to start working on your strength and fundamentals. Yes, the dreaded strength work you should be adding right now into your endurance routine if you haven't already. Now many of us as endurance athletes are reticent to begin a strength routine for a number of reasons. The first one is kind of well, we'll call it bulk, because we're afraid of putting on bulk. I don't want to get bulky. I don't want to put too much mass on. Well, simply by doing workouts does not mean you are going to put on mass. To put on size and mass requires a calorie surplus. So just by going to the gym and spending time under tension in the gym does not mean you are going to put on mass or bulk. It just means you're going to convert your existing tissues into lean body tissue, lean muscle mass that can be very effective and helpful in your endurance sports. The second reason, which makes a lot more sense, is when we think about these things, it's often in the in-season. And we are reluctant to start strength training in the in-season because especially in the beginning of, of a strength training regimen, we start to feel that heaviness in the legs, the, uh, the DOMS, any kind of soreness that comes for the several days after those workouts. And it does detract from our performance. There's no doubt that strength work does detract from performance in the following days as the muscles start to heal. We can't typically afford to do that, especially as it is new in the in season when we have races, group rides to be concerned with. We can't be sore or tired because of strength work. So we are often remiss in our strength regime because we don't start at the right time. That's why we wanna start it now. Build up your resistance and make it a part of the routine and maintenance so that your body becomes used to it. So when it comes to the in season, you may be dropping the weight, but you are maintaining some of the strength and movements just so that you can make sure that you are not letting those same muscles start to deteriorate with time as we break them down in our in season. Now I wanna share with you a workout that you can use all year long. You can do this at home, you can do this at the gym. It's gonna be a kettlebell circuit style workout. And this is one of those workouts that's great to not only focus and work those muscles that we often neglect, but also to maintain them in the in season. You can incorporate this workout all year long, but now is the time to start and adapt. This workout is designed to attack the transverse plane. So your transverse core or abdominal muscles, your glute medius, and your uh, vastus lateralis on the outside of the uh, quad muscle. These are muscles that are in a very finite area that aren't being worked as often when you are a runner, a cyclist, a, a swimmer. Uh, because we are using that same range of motion over and over, we are often not working those muscles that really can help stabilize and support other working muscle groups as they fatigue. So this 13 exercise workout is designed to really strengthen those muscles to work as a support for your other working muscles and to help you resist fatigue, which is immediately noticeable on the bike as you progress through your exercise training. These 13 exercises is meant to be done in a circuit style workout. It's only gonna take 10 minutes of your time with the flexibility to do it pretty much anywhere but you are not to rest between these intervals if at all possible. The point is to add as much load and fatigue into the system is in as short a time frame as possible. Keep the heart rate up so that you can glean as much uh, benefit from this workout as possible. This is the type of thing that's going to make these muscles fatigue resistance that are going that is going to have uh, benefits out on the road for your, your cycling, your running, or in the pool, or any other endurance sport that you may be engaged in. So what you need is pretty simple. You're gonna need a kettlebell or maybe multiple kettlebells as you might need multiple different weights. So you could use an adjustable kettlebell. This is just a very simple, adjustable, quick adjust kettlebell where you can pull three pounds out at a time. Uh, I also have another smaller kettlebell here that I will use for particular exercise uh, as I have some injury to my shoulders here. I have a hard time stabilizing the exercise as I rehab those shoulders. So keep that in mind for different exercises. While you wanna try to maximize the weight that you, you can to do these exercises, we also don't want to get injured. Women probably between 15 and 20 pounds, men 25, 30 pounds, and more if you're more experienced with kettlebell work. The other thing you might need is a mat 
or a um, a folded up towel. I'm doing this here on the soft grass, so I won't really have uh, much of a need for that, although I probably will get a little bit messy here in the leaves. Uh, I won't really need anything to soften the uh, surface of the ground here, but you will be doing a, a get up exercise that will take you down onto your knees. Uh, so if you have sensitive knees, I mean, if you have normal knees, you probably don't want to do this on hardwood or hard surface like concrete. You might want some extra padding under your knees, so have that prepared. And then if you need it, bring a drink, but this is a quick exercise, 10 minutes. You shouldn't have to stop for much. Uh, if you're just getting started, it's okay to take some breaks, but work up to not having to stop. So I'm gonna go through each of the 13 exercises, show you how they work. I am not the queen of kettlebells by any stretch of the imagination. I have limitations and injuries myself. My form will not be 100% perfect, but I will try to do the best I can to demonstrate these exercises as they should be done. And I encourage you to look at other resources, whether they be online or here on YouTube, uh, that will show you better breakdown in form than uh, I am physically capable of. But I am working towards that more ideal form myself as I am developing as an athlete. So the first exercise is going to be the goblet squat with the hover. So you're gonna pick up your kettlebell in the goblet orientation here like so. And you're gonna do a squat with feet about shoulder width apart into about 90 degrees. You're going to look to make sure that your weight is on your heels, not in your knees, so basically in your haunches. And instead of a standard squat, you're going to hover for a three count at the bottom like so. One, two, three, up. One, two, three. Up. So you're going to do them at about that pace. You're going to look to do that quickly and you're going to do a total of 15 repetitions. The next exercise you're going to do is a hand-to-hand -hand Russian swing. So if you're not familiar with the standard Russian swing, it's where you take your kettlebell like so from between your legs and you're going to thrust and the kettlebell will come up to a little bit above parallel to the ground at about eye level. You're producing your power from your hips and your lower body and not from your arms. In this case, as the name might indicate, instead of a standard Russian swing, you're gonna go hand to hand. So you're gonna exchange with a one-handed Russian swing from one hand to the other at the top, like so. And you are gonna go ahead and do that for 30 passes, which will be 15 swings on each side. The next exercise you're going to do is you're gonna take your kettlebell and you're gonna place it in a position where you can do lateral hops from side to side. So lateral hop, you've probably seen in soccer or football, but it's basically where you hop over the top of something like a soccer ball, or in this case, the kettlebell. And what you're looking to do is to strengthen those stabilizer muscles at the base of each hop. So you're gonna to look to kind of do this as fast as you can with good form and good stability. You're gonna do that for a total of 30 passes or 15 on each side. The next exercise is going to be the burpee to high pull. So if you're familiar at all with burpees, you're gonna start in that same position with hands on either side of your kettlebell. You're gonna jump out, feet back in and together. And instead of just jumping, you're gonna pick up the kettlebell and perform a high pull and you're gonna throw leaves all over yourself as you do it, as I have here. So looking at it in one fluid motion, out, in, high, pull. Repeat. And you're gonna do 10 of those. Trust me, 10 of those will feel pretty wicked when you're done. The next exercise is going to be a lateral lunge. So pretty typical, you're gonna take the kettlebell and you're just gonna hold it parallel to the ground and you're gonna perform a lateral lunge. And you're gonna lower with the kettlebell remaining in that kind of gravity held position. Now this isn't looking for just brute flexibility. This is looking to get you a good stretch and pull and stiffness on that outer leg, but you're not looking to necessarily get as low to the ground, but you're gonna repeat that 15 per side or 30 total passes side to side. The next exercise is a standing Russian twist. So you're going to pick up the kettlebell and you're gonna put the base of the kettlebell in the direction of the twist. So you're gonna start with one side at a time. So in this particular case, I'm gonna start with a left and I'm gonna basically force to the left with the kettlebell, getting a good twist and activating my obliques. You'll also see that my trailing leg twists and rotates, you're going to want to do that so that you're not putting excess strain on your lumbar region. You should feel that in the left oblique. You're going to do 15 
in one direction, flip the kettlebell, and do 15 in the other direction. This is one of those exercises where as heavy a kettlebell as you can manage will be key because you're gonna to wanna to load those obliques as much as possible. This is where you might need the padding underneath your knees. These are called get-ups. And you're gonna start in a kneeling position with your kettlebell in front of you. You're gonna pick it up in the goblet position again. You're gonna hold it close to your chest and you're gonna pick one side to start with. So I'm gonna start with my right leg and you're gonna put your leg at a basically a 90 degree angle, stand up, kneel back down and let yourself down. So the leg you choose will always be your leading leg. You're going to do 20 on one side and then start with 20 on the other side. So you're gonna to wanna to do these as quickly as you can. This next exercise isn't going to be as strength laden as much as it is going to be just to keep your heart rate up. This is gonna kind of be your rest from load but maintain your heart rate through these exercises. These are gonna be the simple toe taps so you're just gonna take the kettlebell in front of you and do your toe taps like so. And you're gonna make sure that you hit it about 20 times on each side or maybe a total of 30 seconds. So for this exercise, I'm gonna to move to a lighter kettlebell because of my own limitations. That does not necessarily mean that you will have to do the same. I have some difficulty stabilizing with my shoulder, but this is a pendulum snatch. We're gonna do 20 of these on each side, focusing on one side at a time. And if you're not familiar with the snatch, it is starts very much like a uh, Russian swing, but you're gonna go all the way up and snatch at the top. So swing, snatch. I'll show you that from the side. So you can see that I'm stopping the momentum pretty much cold at that upright position. Now, I have a kind of a bulky kettlebell here. So when I snatch, that may strike your wrist, depending on what size you have. You can choose to wear wrist braces for this if you so choose. Uh, you may also be able to stop it depending on the shape of the handle before it strikes the step top of your wrist. That really is kind of be, gonna be contingent on your equipment. But again, 20 on the right, followed by 20 on the left or vice versa. Okay, the next exercise, again, to keep that heart rate up, you're not gonna need the kettlebell for this one. These are gonna be a standard mountain climber. So you're gonna do 50 toe touches total, 25 per side, just a standard quick mountain climber. Show you that from the side. And again, you'll do a count of 50. So each time one of your toes comes forward, that will be one. The next exercise is going to be a weighted sit up with the kettlebell. So I'll grab my heavier kettlebell here. And you're gonna start knees bent, lying down. You're gonna hold this kind of, I like to hold it where I'm supporting the weight of the bell, kind of holding it around almost like a ball. You're gonna do a sit up and then you're going to push up with the kettlebell. So you wanna to try to make this one fluid motion. You're gonna do that for a total of 15 repetitions. The next exercise, you would be staying on the ground here and it's going to keep working that core and it's a standard Russian twist. So you're just gonna take that kettlebell back. I like to hold it in the goblet position. You can hold it around the outside of the kettlebell as well. Basically lift up those legs, extend out, and perform a Russian twist. And you're gonna do that for a total of 20 full repetitions. So 20 being side to side. So it will be a total 40 count if you're counting one side as one repetition. The last exercise, you wanna finish out strong. You're gonna keep working that core and you're gonna let it all out of the tank on this one. Again, in this prone position here, you're gonna hold your kettlebell either in the goblet position or upright like so. You're gonna hover your upper body and you're gonna bicycle kick giving it everything you got, an all out sprint for 30 seconds. This is a very simple workout. If you do these back to back as a circuit style, it shouldn't take you any more than 10 to 12 minutes to complete all of these exercises. Work your way up if you need to. If you need to start with a lighter weight, that's fine. If you have to reduce the reps, that's also fine. If you need to take more breaks, that's okay, but work yourself up to being able to do a heavier weight with a solid contiguous 10 minute to 12 minute 
no rest circuit style workout. Just want to close things up with you guys. Had to run inside, look like it was about to rain. Did not want to get caught out with the camera and all of that jazz. But I just want to let you guys know that I very much appreciate each and every one of you who are watching these videos. If you got some value out of this workout, if you wouldn't mind hitting that thumbs up button down below, it does help the channel out quite a bit. Uh, if you haven't already subscribed, please go ahead and do so. If you have any comments on this workout or any suggestions for future videos, please leave them in the comments down below. I really like to engage with you guys as much as I can down there. And thank you again for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. See ya.